My dear friends and colleagues, in this video presentation, let's look at the technology and the physics that lie behind the diffractive bifocal and trifocal intraocular lenses. Cataract surgery provides us an excellent opportunity to get rid of not only the decreased vision due to cataract, but also the patient's pre-existing refractive errors as well. The construction of a bifocal consists of a monofocal IOL, whether it's a hydrophilic or hydrophobic acrylic lens, on which a diffractive kiniform plate is added. The monofocal lens will focus the light on the retina. The behavior of light that passes to the kiniform plate will largely depend on the height and the width of the refractive ridges. Now, since the foveal sensitive wavelength of light is 550 nanometers, the height of the ridges are controlled around this value. If the height of the ridge is kept at half wavelength of light, then the light energy distribution will be 40% of the light will go for distance, 40% for near, and 20% of this light energy is lost. Now, if you increase the height of the diffractive ridges, then more light will be directed towards the near. For instance, if it is at one wavelength, almost all the light energy will go towards the near point. And if the height of the ridges is decreased, then there will be more light energy that is directed towards a distant focus. And if you reduce it to almost keeping it flat, then almost all light will go for distance. Now, this fact is utilized in a phenomenon called apodization, where the height of the ridges is progressively decreased from the center to the periphery, such that when the pupil is small, there is more light energy being directed towards the near focus and when the pupil dilates, there is more light energy going to the distant focus. Now, the disadvantage of having an apodization is that it is pupil dependent. Now, in a non-apodized lens, the light energy distribution will be a straight line at 40% for distance and near and 20% lost. However, in an apodized lens, light energy distribution will depend on the pupil size. A pupil size of less than 2 millimeters has equal amount of light distributed for distance and near but above a size of 3.5 millimeters there is a gross skew of the amount of light going for distance as compared to near. This may be one of the reasons why it may be difficult to read a menu card when you're taking your wife out for a candlelight dinner. Now the width of the kind of four will actually control the near focal add of the caniform segment. Now if the segment is narrower, then the add is much higher as you can see, and if it is wider, then the add is much lower. Now within the same caniform segment itself, you find that the width narrows slightly from the center to the periphery. This is to allow more versions of the peripheral rays so that they all converge at the near focal point instead of being just parallel to each other. Now, light passing through a kiniform has four orders of rays. The zero order rays are those that carry undeviated through the kiniform plate. The first order rays are passed through the kiniform and they will focus at the near focal add. Let's say in this case it's plus 3.5. The second order rays have a vergence of about twice that of the near add. That is, they have a vergence of plus 7 diopters and they come to focus at 14 centimeters. 4% of the rays belong to the second order and this 4% is not utilized but in the bifocal it is lost. If the height of the kiniform ridges are kept at half the wavelength of light then the zero and the first order will be 40% each and the second order will be 4% and the remaining 16% will be lost. Hence putting together the theoretical model of a bifocal lens there's a base lens where the light passing through it will focus at the retina and the kiniform plate where the zero order rays carry on undeviated and the first order rays will focus at its near rad which is at plus four diopters. And when you combine both of this, you will get an effective lens with two points of focus, one on the retina and one for the near focus. But what happens in real life is slightly different because the kiniform plate is added to the front surface of the lens. Okay, let us consider this system. The zero order rays emanating from infinity will be parallel and after passing through the bifocal complex will get focused directly onto the retina. 
whereas the first order rays after passing through the bifocal lens will come to focus in front of it. This is physiologically suppressed to enable the patient to see well for distance. The light emerging from the near focal point, the zero order rays will pass through the bifocal system and come to focus behind the retina, whereas the first order rays will converge and meet at the retina. Physiological suppression occurs once again to enable the patient to see clearly at a near distance as well. And this is how the bifocal lenses actually work. Now moving to trifocal lens designs. A trifocal lens is ingeniously designed by combining two bifocal lenses of two different ads. Let us say that uh, there is a plus 3.5 ad kind of form and a 1.75 kind of form put together in order to create a trifocal intraocular lens. Now the zero order rays from 3.5 diopters and the zero order rays from 1.75 diopter kind of forms go undeviated. However, the first order rays from 3.5 diopters will focus at 30 to 40 centimeters, whereas the second order from 3.5 diopter kind of form has a virgence of 7 diopters and focus at 14 centimeters and it's not utilized. However, the first order rays from the 1.75 diopter kind of form will focus at 60 to 70 centimeters of the intermediate range, whereas the second order rays from 1.75 diopters as a virgence of 3.5 diopters and this light will therefore reinforce the near focal point. Hence trifocals have three focal areas of convergence uh, that is a distance, intermediate range as well as a near range. The scattered and unutilized light is reduced by 4% and now it's not 20% but around 16%. The binocular defocus curve tell us a very clear picture of the performance of these lenses with respect to the range of vision. This is a binocular defocus curve for a restore uh, bifocal lens showing a clear focus for distance and near whereas a compromise in the intermediate focus. Now this binocular defocus curve is of a 80 Lisa trifocal intraocular lens. This shows a good range of vision across all distances. The plot looks almost too good to be true. However, it was personally plotted by me and this is how the trifocals can really work. In addition, when we have a two principal points of focus, at each of these points there is a blur circle and the amount of the blur circle or the size of the blur circle has been shown to be responsible for the photic phenomena like halos and glare. In a trifocal lens, since there are three specific points of foci, the blur circles are also much smaller, which means the trifocals probably will have lesser incidence of halos and glare when compared to the bifocal uh, diffractive design multifocal intraocular lenses. However, the trade-off of using bifocal or trifocal diffractive design multifocal lenses is that there would be definitely a drop in contrast because of the split of the light energy distribution for the distance and near focus and 20% of light being lost. In addition, the patient will appreciate halos and glare because of the blur circles and the need for physiological suppression that occurs. But with the onset of neural adaptation, this becomes progressively lesser as time goes on. Remember, it's very important to know when a trifocal or bifocal lens should not be implanted. Definitely not in finicky patients with type A personalities, those that who have a high, higher order aberrations on the cornea, eyes with comorbid conditions like moderate to advanced glaucoma and diabetic retinopathies, and people with eccentric pupils, and finally those with abnormal angle alpha. Now let me briefly tell you about the abnormal ocular axis and angles. This has been taken from the publication of Dr. Chang and Dr. Waring and Burdell. The optical axis is the line that joins the Purkinje 1, 3 and 4 images. Purkinje 2 image is seldom seen. The visual axis is a line that runs through from the fixation point to the fovea passing through the nodal point of the eye. The pupillary axis is the line that passes from the center of the pupil through the cornea and at this point it is perpendicular to the, the midpoint of the corneal surface. The line of sight is a line joining the center of the pupil to the fixation point. 
Now let's move to the angles. Angle alpha is the angle that forms between the optical axis and the visual axis. It has a numeric value of 5 degrees. Angle kappa, uh, the old definition, is the angle between the pupillary axis and the visual axis. The newer definition is slightly changed to angle kappa, otherwise known as angle lambda. Then this is the angle between the pupillary axis and the line of sight, not the visual axis, at the pupillary center. Now, since these angles are not easy to measure and they need expensive instrumentation, a new reference mark for trifocal IOL centration is the chord mu that was first described by Dr. Chang and Dr. Waring. This is otherwise known as the chord mu or the chang Waring chord. This is the two-dimensional distance between the center of the pupil and the coaxially viewed corneal right reflex or the Hirschberg's reflex. Dr. Jack Holliday actually differentiated the chord mu into two types which he called the apparent chord mu and the actual chord mu. The apparent chord mu is measured on the corneal surface and will undergo magnification by the corneal curvature. It is measured by the IOL Master 700 at the lens star as a value of 0.3 millimeters plus or minus 0.15 millimeters. The actual chord mu is measured on the iris lens plane or the pupillary plane and will not be magnified by the corneal curvature. This measurement is taken by the Pentacam and the OCT with a slightly lower mean value of 0.2 millimeters plus or minus 0.11 millimeters. Do not implant trifocal or multifocal IOLs in the following scenario. If the apparent chord mu is more than 0.6 or the actual chord mu is more than 0.42 millimeters, as this would increase the incidence of the patient suffering from disabling halos and glare. Also remember that one should avoid implanting trifocal intraocular lenses. If the angle alpha is more than 0.5 millimeters, now this is a measurement that is taken by the eye trace machine of Tracy Technology. And if the patient suffers from an increasing amount of higher order corneal aberrations as well. Trifocal lenses are a boon to us because they give us excellent distance, intermediate and near vision. Probably the drop in contrast and the complaints of halos and glare is a little bit overrated because they tend to decrease over a period of time. Now currently we have extended depth of focus lenses with inwoven diffractive designs that probably outperform the trifocal IOLs. The near future would probably see the introduction of accommodating lenses that do not get restricted by the onset of capsular fibrosis and behave like a natural human crystalline lens. Thank you for your attention.